So in mythology, the giant is often the symbol for the state. And in uh, Norse mythology, the first giant is called Ymir. Uh, Ymir, he created many more giants, and he was eventually slain by the god Odin. And from his body, they created the new world. Now, I think there is a lesson from that story for all of us here at the Network State Conference, and that is that we can build the new order using the pieces from the old. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Uh, my name is Sandre Rosh. I started my career as a policy advisor to the government of Norway. I grew frustrated with the pace of change that we had in government. Uh, so eventually I left that job to become a digital nomad and start a startup. Uh, when I did that, I also lost one of the good things we have in Norway, which is that we have a great social safety net. Uh, since my, the company I was running was a freelancer platform, I also realized that this is a problem that many other people who work online have. So therefore, I set out to build its replacement. Why? So essentially, the internet has made everything geographically borderless, and I don't have to tell you that. But our social infrastructure and institutions is built for a world where that is not the case. So for this reason, the citizenship infrastructure that it provides, that the uh, legacy countries provide, is becoming increasingly obsolete. So what's the solution? The solution is to build a new country on the internet, where the infrastructure that it provides is global and digital. So we are essentially working on making a digital citizenship that each of you in this room can get as a second citizenship that includes both a global social safety net and a passport. In the future, I predict that more a lot of people will view countries more like products than they do today. Our progress so far has been amazing. We now have almost 30,000 paying members and over $25 million in yearly revenues. This has given us great capabilities to pursue our mission with even more strength. So how are we getting there? Well, there's essentially two tracks that we are pursuing in parallel. One is the social safety net, and the other is the passport. Our goal is to eventually offer them as a package, as a citizenship, as a service, as it says here on the slide. I think that this will be one of the core infrastructure that is useful for the network state ecosystem. Uh, in fact, our plug-and-play health insurance and social safety net products is already used by several other network state projects, uh, like Prospera that spoke here earlier. So step one uh, of our mission was to build the global social safety net. Why? Why would an internet country have a global social safety net? Well, think of it this way. The majority of the budget for all countries in the world is the social safety net today. So observing this fact, plus the observation that it becomes obsolete for digital nomads, uh, that led us to conclude that this is the central task uh, that we want our internet country to provide. And this essentially means the social protections that you would conventionally get through a nation state like health insurance, income protection, retirement, and the like, provided to you as a digital subscription that you can use worldwide. Step two is to launch the Plumia Passport, a truly next-generation global passport. So a brief story of how we landed on the strategy that we have to make this passport. It starts on Web Summit in 2019 where we gave a talk where we predicted the rise of nomad visas as countries would start to compete to attract digital nomad citizens. And in the audience of that talk sat a guy from Barbados. Six months later, COVID hit. And that man then sent a letter to his government proposing nomad visas as a way to save Barbados' struggling tourist-dependent economy. They implemented that in just two months. Now, 
Since that time, in the following three years, 80 countries have implemented nomad visas. And we were even invited to the United Nations to talk about this idea to the countries of the world. So just to explain, nomad visas are multi-year visas that you can get just with an income requirement, and it's made specifically for digital nomads. So it is on this success that we are charting a path for like a super passport that will actually work. Uh, we will soon release the MVP, uh, which is called the Nomad Border Pass. So think of it as Schengen, if you're familiar with the EU. Schengen, but for countries that have nomad visas. So by making this, we are also building diplomatic relationships with countries, with nation state countries around the world, ensuring that our passport will be accepted at, at borders worldwide. By the end, we will have all countries in the world participating allowing for a passport that truly makes you a global citizen. So how will the world change if we succeed? Uh, so think back to the 1600s when the nation state first appeared. It wasn't that the city states, which was the previous paradigm, disappeared overnight. Rather, there was a transition period where the tasks and responsibilities were reallocated between the city and the nation. Uh, I think that this transition is an analogous to what will happen in the transition that we have ahead of us. Some activities and infrastructure that used to be the purview of the nation state will move upwards to the global layer where it can be more efficiently provided for. Why start with digital nomads for an internet country? So we started with digital nomads, one, because by definition they are early adopters, willing to try a new internet country. But two, what has happened over the last years is that digital nomads as a constituency have moved from the fringe of the fringe to being slightly more mainstream. Today there are almost 17 million Americans who say that they are digital nomads. 72 million who say they want to become a digital nomad over the next three years. So if you only take those, the American nomads, and say that's their own country, that would be in the top 20 most populous countries in the world. And the figures are similar for Europe and the rising fast worldwide. Digital nomads is not a fringe movement anymore. It is already a large enough constituency that we can build our internet country for them. I founded this company in 2018 with my friends Hans and Sarah. Today, we have over 150 people from more than 60 countries working full-time to realize this vision. We did Y Combinator in 2018, and we have raised over $50 million in VC funding so far. Our work aims to level the global playing field, essentially from between citizens of different countries, ensuring equal opportunities, and ultimately, we believe freedom for everyone. Within the network state ecosystem, though, I think that our strategic niche is precisely that we are friendly with the existing order. We see ourselves as the bridge builders between the nation states of old and the new order that is emerging on the internet and here today. I do, in, in fact, believe it is crucial that nation states get into a positive sum competitive dynamic where each of them try to succeed rather than be motivated by fear because then they will try to ban everything. So I invite you to join us. Uh, already today, you can go get on the waitlist for the Nomad Border Pass, a five-year visa to 10 countries. That's our MVP. Uh, you will also get our newsletter, you know, the meetups to have for the many people dedicated to the cause of bringing about this country. Dave Cook, an anthropologist at University College London, he said in this article uh, that Time Magazine wrote about Plumia, he said he'd heard talk about digital nomad nations before, but it was usually on a beach somewhere when someone's been smoking a bit too much. I actually appreciate this sentiment because it shows how far we've come already. The reality is that we are closer than ever. Next year, we will launch the full social safety net and the Nomad Border Pass, the dream of an internet country will soon be realized. In fact, I am certain 
that my son, uh, who was born last week, by the way, uh, will grow up as a citizen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and when we look back to today, 100 years from now, I am confident that this will be one of the major social transformations of our generation. So thank you very much for listening. I'm Sandra Rush. Come find me after. Thank you.